Jason, is this the ones here already? Oh my goodness. Literally, <laughs> the windows, like, blinds aren't even open, and I put on so much bronzer so that you could see my face, and I'm still invisible. It is what it is. So, for the first few minutes, we're just gonna chill here. See if that helps. <laughs> I need to close one of the blinds because my face is like... Hi Gecko Animations, how are you? My face is like non-existent. Um, and also, Hi Gecko Animations, how are you? My face is like non-existent. Um, and also, my bangs are up, so all the light is just blaring. So, hi Lisa, hi Dear Tastic, how are you guys? Hi Dear Tastic, how are you guys? Good, I'm glad to hear that. I'm good as well. Um, we're gonna give it a couple minutes for everyone to get here before we start the unboxing, but it's a big one, so I'm really excited. Okay, hello, 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 everyone coming in. Hi, Catherine. Hi, Daniela. Okay, I'm gonna go shut this blind real quick just so that you can see my face a little bit better. Um, hello, everyone. I'll be right back. And also, I'm in my jammies. This is a chill stream today. I got my Hufflepuff sweatpants on. Actually, they're my Hogwarts. I got my Hufflepuff sweatpants on. Actually, they're my Hogwarts one, not my Hufflepuff one. And I'm wearing my own merch, so if that's cringy, I apologize. <laughs> Okay. Can you see me any better? Uh, no, you can't. <laughs> That's okay. We'll figure it out. I have two lover geckos. I have... Hi, Curtis. I have 25? I think that's the number that we counted in yesterday's live stream. If you're from yesterday's live stream, I took the bandit off that I had on my hand yesterday, and it took two rounds of oil, peanut butter, three rounds <clears throat> of Dawn dish soap to get the sticky off and it hurt so bad. I have eight animals. I have almost 50. I said I'd stop at 50, so <laughs> we're getting close. Yay sight! Sorry, I have not like eaten or drank anything. I like have a little bowl of cereal off the side because like I had enough time but then my dog puked and I had to clean it up so that's why I'm a little bit late. Good afternoon William, how are you? Water is great. I love water. It's my favorite beverage. People who are like, and I like the flavor of water, I'm like, water don't taste like anything except nutritious. Rubbing alcohol usually takes the sticky stuff right off. I know, if I, if none of those had worked, I was gonna try like um, that or a nail polish remover because I was getting fed up. Like everything you think would have worked, like wasn't working, but fortunately it's all gone now. Like all little sustenance is important, very much so. All the little like fuzzies and stuff were getting stuck to it. Four reptiles, three dogs, one betta fish. I have a betta fish too. Good, and you. I am doing well. A little congested, but nothing that, uh, that, you know, is, is bad. That video of my mice eating peanut butter's audio was so cringy. <laughs> I was not expecting, like, when you had said what you said in the, in the message about, uh, the shriek or whatever. I wasn't expecting it in the background. Uh, that exact noise that I heard, I was like, oh my god. You right. It's, it's unexpected. Uh, it wasn't that cringy, though. I've made way cringier sounds, or I've heard way cringier sounds. I didn't get a lot of sleep, but I got my butt out of bed to watch. You're amazing. I love you. What do you think about the name Salem for a leopard gecko? I love it. I got noticed, finally. <laughs> do I not always notice you? I'm sorry. Hello, my name is Jeff. Hi, I am Jessica. I like the name Jeff. Um, one of my friends from college, uh, like super great guy, his name was Jeff, but it was spelled, it is spelled G-E-O instead of J from all the YouTubers. Oh, like you don't get notice in journal. Well, to be fair, a lot of them have bigger uh, followings. Can't wait to see what you got. I know, I'm very excited to reveal. I have had this box for days now and I haven't opened it because I wanted to open it on camera. Hi, Aaron, how are you? So I hope you guys are excited because I am excited. And also the pet reveal is super exciting. Um, oops, I just dropped my water bottle. That's what that noise was. Um, oh yeah, like I said earlier, I'm wearing my own merch. Please don't find that cringy. I just literally love long sleeve shirts. So like I wear this all the time. Um, but I literally like roll out of bed. I was wearing this to sleep. So I just put like my face on because it was looking rough. Because yesterday I had a migraine. When I get migraine, you might be able to tell a little bit, but my eyes get swollen in here. Um, and then uh, the reason my bangs are up is because when I get migraines, I like furiously run my hair, my hands through my hair to get it out of my face. I don't get migraines that often, but when I do, whoo, oh, Nelly. But yeah, I had one last night and I kind of knew I was going to have one because I felt like, like terrible the morning, um, like yesterday morning. So I'm fine now though. Just a little, like, um, a little tired, but I'm otherwise okay. So 
We're gonna we're gonna hit the five minute mark here in five seconds. Hello, you, did you miss anything? No, you did not. I wanted to wait for people to get here, so we're gonna wait one more minute, and when we hit the six minute mark, we will start unboxing. And I have unboxed numerous packages from Josh's Frogs before. I'm still invisible. Like the blinds are shut. What is this? Um, so I've I've unboxed numerous packages uh, from Josh's Frogs. <laughs> for a second, I was thinking. I thought an animal was in a box. No, 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 no. These are not, no, 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 no. These are not live animals. I would not wait to do a live stream uh, with live animals in there. But this will pertain to live animals that I'll be getting this week or next. I want your merch, but I can't. You're my favorite reptile. I always wait for your video to come out. <laughs> You're my favorite reptile. I love that so much. Preach peppermint EO is the best for migraines. Oh, really? I did not know that. Damn, my connection is crappy right now because I'm traveling on a train. Excuse me, I am sorry to hear that. I actually have a wild train story, but I don't want to tell it while you're on a train because it might make you very paranoid or anxious. Um, but it's like one of the craziest like stories I've ever experienced. And I'm a writer, and in college, that story inspired one of my short stories that I... Um, like read to the class or that we like shared with the class or whatever and it was like pretty well liked because it was very colorful because it came from an experience that I had and like the whole time I was <clears throat> on the train when the crazy thing was happening I was literally just why did you ignore me Grace I'm so sorry I didn't mean to ignore you the comments come in fast sometimes but I promise you are recognized hello Grace how are you um but yeah the train it was like a wild wild incident uh and so it in my mind it was very much more a colorful imaginative thing and so I made a story about it okay I'm gonna go ahead and get started but I'm gonna see if maybe scooting back will help this <laughs> ghost face that we're having I literally put on extra bronzer so that this would not happen no it didn't it didn't really help hi do you have uh, you've made me get a bearded dragon. Oh, well, that's really interesting. I don't know, like, sometimes people always, you know, have, like, feelings about, hi, like, you inspire me to get this animal because you always hope that it's, like, a good type of inspire and not, like, um, like, if I bought something, then you're, you're gonna buy something. Like, if you think about the trends surrounding 101 Dalmatians, I'm gonna start unboxing, actually, while I talk. Uh, the trends surrounding 101, should I open the big one or little one first? Go ahead. Let me know in the comments. Um, but the trend surrounding 101 Dalmatians is that when people saw the movie, everyone went out and got a Dalmatian, and then they had more Dalmatians in shelters than ever before because people had just impulse bought them. So having an audience, I kind of feel very responsible about like what I do and what I put out. So that's why I try not to advertise an animal too much on my channel unless I have a care video out. I have two leopard geckos, two bearded dragons. I have. 25 liver geckos and two bearded dragons. Big, small, big, little one, little one first. Okay, so it looks like it's mixed. I'll just do the little one since the big one is like more exciting. We'll save it for last. So I ripped the tag off um, because I don't want to dox myself. Not that anyone would try and come to my house, hopefully, but you never know. So I looked at your guide not too long ago and waited 12 months and did my research, but yes. Okay, that's great. See, I'm not, I was not saying anything about you. Uh, or anyone in particular. It's just something that like as a pet youtuber or an animal channel or whatever that like we have to be very aware of our um, influence on people Especially younger people Okay So this first box Little okay Curtis. I'm opening the little one. Um, so this first box um, I'm gonna keep that aside. We have two items in this box. It, the fluval is misleading. It is not anything aquarium based. So if you want to take a guess, go ahead and take a guess. But the cool thing about Josh's Frogs is that whenever you order anything, whether it be feeders, whether it be um, a live animal, whether it just be supplies, they will always include a little note sheet and it's super nice. And so like when I get feeders from them, they will include like care guides on how to take care of all those feeders. Feeders. Okay. Feeders. Mm. So, let's see, did anyone take any guesses? I don't think anyone's, shh, honey, go lay down. My dog is super upset that I'm live streaming right now. Sit down, sit, 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 good boy. Cork, oh, I love cork bark, but no, it's not cork. Um, lay down, Jackson. Deco for the new bookshelves. No, it's not. It has nothing to do with the geckos. Here I was thinking about something aquarium because of Fluval. Never mind. Yeah, they just sent it in that box, I think. New decor. It is a sort of decor, but it is not for the leopard geckos. Deco 
great. Hey, stop, Jackson. You're going to pull the cord. Ugh, let's go back just a little bit, honey. Live plants. No, it's not live plants. Jessica, are you a Christ follower? Technically, no. I'm agnostic, so I kind of like to follow everything. I don't like to believe in just one religion. I like to believe in all of them or, or none of them. I'm really open-minded to the idea that there are numerous ways of thinking, that you don't just have to pick one. Food. It is not food. I just literally um, got superworms, hornworms, waxworms from Josh's Frogs last week. Some kind of mister. No, it is not a mister. Deco for rats. New season theme. I want to do a winter or Christmas theme for the rats, but I don't have the money right now. A boyfriend. <laughs> I have a fiance. Um, yes, I, I packaged a boyfriend in this box because <laughs> I need one. <laughs> yeah, um, no, I'm with my fiance. I've actually known him for almost 10 years, but we haven't been together that long. Um, what was I saying? No, I want to do a winter or Christmas themed uh, rat cage, but I don't have the money because of the theme that I'm planning for. Hi, Chris. Uh, hi, Morgan. The theme that I'm planning for the new year or like the big cage theme that I'm really happy about, that I'm really excited about. Can we donate? Yes, you can donate if you want to. There is a super chat button down below in the chat and that's where you can leave a super chat. Basically what happens is you donate a certain dollar amount and then you're your comment will stay at the top longer and will be highlighted. But um, don't feel like you have to at all. I keep losing internet connection because it's so windy. I'm so sorry to hear that. Um, that really stinks. What was I saying about the rats? Oh yes, so their next theme is super cool. Probably the coolest theme I've planned out. It's going to cost me like $150. Can I donate a big male gecko? I'm still mad at him. <laughs> I'm all stock on geckos. Trust me, or else I'd still be getting geckos. Um, people always ask me, like, is your fr I'm not going to answer that. Uh, not being rude, but if anyone joined, they might think the channel is haunted. What? Because my face is ghost-like? I'm... I'm hurt. I'm hurt. Um, my dad actually called me Casper when I was in high school. Ouch to your wallet. Yes, ouch to my wallet. My wallet has had a lot of ouches this year um, from enclosure upgrades. The gecko bookshelves cost like 800 or more dollars, somewhere around there. Uh, and then I bought new enclosures all the time this year. And that was really nice though. I like buying new enclosures and decorating them and stuff. Okay, so we're going to show you what's inside the box 12 minutes in. Sorry for anyone who's watching this not live. So, first thing we have is a Magnatural's ledge. Um, so this ledge right here is a granite color, so it's gray, and I used granite ones in my, how's the betta fish coming? Great. I used granite ones in my Crested Gecko enclosure. I absolutely love Magnatural's ledges, but I do not like the price, and if you get them off of Amazon, the price is steep, and sometimes they don't have free shipping, so then the price is steeper. Um, sometimes you can pay like $30 for just one ledge, however... I discovered on Josh's Frogs recently that they, did you end up finding a new job? I have the same job. I'm just waiting. The live stream sure is more interesting than, than the past ones. Yeah, I'm just waiting to hear back. I'm supposed to start this month. Um, but uh, it's basically a, a safe, like a animal safe ledge that's made out of foam. And then uh, you, of course I always rinse them off and stuff before I use them, but then they have these really strong magnets on the back and then they hang on to an enclosure. And I use these in my Crested Gecko enclosure. I use them in my Firebelly Toad enclosure. So hopefully that can give you some sort of hint as to what animal I'll be getting next. So here's, this size is medium, so medium. And then this is a feeder ledge. This like has little, you can't see it. I'll open it actually so you guys can see it. This is an unboxing after all, is it not? Oh, as I was saying, they're really cheap on Josh's Frogs. Like, they were like $16.99 and $17.99, which is way cheaper than if you get them off of Amazon. So here is the feeder ledge, and it has uh, comes with cups, but I won't need these because I intend... Oh, I'm going to give it away if I say it like that. Never mind. Um, so this is a feeder ledge, and... It has like just a nice perfect shape and looks nice and it has the really strong magnets. These magnets are so stinking strong like... <sighs> okay, so as you can see, that's like no exposed magnet. It's covered and then 
I know, sorry, I scared my rat back there. It's really loud. I hate when I cling it on the glass. Is it an animal we've heard about or someone new? Someone new. I'm still waiting on Rue. Her 20 gallon long upright enclosure that I showed on my channel like a month ago has been ready for like two months, <clears throat> but I don't have her yet, so waiting. She's the only animal I'm waiting on. Ooh, girl. <laughs> and then this is the, um, like I said, the medium one. I figured I'd unwrap both of them. Oh my gosh. That ledge is literally living like on a strong queen. <laughs> They're so, so difficult to get the magnets off of, but that's what you want because you don't want like the weight of your animal to fall. No, it's not a crested gecko. I'm waiting on a crested gecko right now named Rue and her enclosure is already set up and everything. So it's not a crested gecko. So there's another ledge. Maybe a gargle or a lychee. I wish it was a lychee. We can't ever seem to get one. How much did you say the feeding ledge was? So this one is $16.99. I want one of those shirts, so buy one, Chris. Um, this is $16.99, I think, and this was $17.99. And if you use code Jessica15 over at Josh's Frogs, you can get them for 15% off, both of them. Like, you can get 15% off your entire purchase. I will include all that in the links below, so, like, when this live stream is over, you can come back here and check. But, um... Yeah, it's it's pretty nice. I was super happy that they reached out because I've been buying stuff from Josh's Frogs for months. Um, and so when they were like, you know, do you want to work with us and have a, a discount code? I was like, heck yes, because I saw Reptilian Garden have one forever ago and I've always been jealous. I was always like, mm, she got that discount code. And I was using her discount code for all those stuff that I was buying. So now we're ready to open the big box does anyone want to take any guesses as to what it is do they ship to belgium i have no idea you'll have to check i know that they do ship internationally but some things um can only be shipped within the u.s due to like um legal reasons by the company not josh's frogs i hear josh's frogs is good they are i've had nothing but good experiences um in terms of communicating with them in terms of having my orders shipped whether it be just like a product or a live insect literally their stuff gets to me so fast, but I think it's because they're only two hours away. Enclosure. You might be right, Paige. You might be right. Um, but yeah, this is a big old box. And it's probably going to be a box in a box in a box, so it's going to take a long time. I get a lot of uh, deco from them. <clears throat> so I'm like losing my voice. Um, yeah, I have bought a lot from them. I've bought multiple enclosures. I have bought... Um, what else have I bought? Oh, I had a... My cave gecko, when I got my cave gecko, um, Nymeria, she actually came in an enclosure that was bioactive and everything had been purchased from Josh's Frogs. So the cave gecko herself, Nymeria, was from Josh's Frogs and then so were the enclosure, the light, the life plants, all of it. And it was really like, pretty much, it was really well done. Like the person probably had little to no experience. What the hell? How you gonna scare me like that? Oh my God. I literally just saw a creepy ghost hand come out of nowhere and move the vacuum. I'm like live streaming right now. Oh my god, I don't know, but all I, I just like saw it falling and thought, oh. I'm like sweating now. That like scared the life out of me. Anyway, so what was I saying? So Nymeria in her enclosure um, and all that came from Josh's Frogs and she's been really easy, healthy gecko, lovely, so I can recommend, uh, even though I've never bought a live animal from, animal from Josh's Frogs yet, she was completely healthy and everything. Yeah, I know, my brother scared the life out of me. Oh my god. I'm like sweating, like, I don't like being startled. So anyway, we're gonna start opening this. <clears throat> but. Oh, and another reason why I really like Josh's Frogs is that they don't deal in wild, caught, imported animals. Every single animal that they sell is going to be captive bred and with like a healthy... Ryan, where are you vacuuming? Okay. It's gonna have like, um... I literally forgot what I was just saying. So they're all having like a really great quarantine so like when you look at their website if you look at any of their live animals they come with like a health guarantee they come with um one day shipping they won't like do two day shipping which some people do which is like not good you want your animals to get to you as fast as possible and then they also have uh, like a great quarantine program where 
they have like a mandatory month where the animal is quarantined so it's really great and they also have a youtube channel so you can go ahead and check them out on youtube i'll include that again like i said in the links Ugh. okay this is about to have to get pretty physical <gasps> no stay <laughs> I'm glad they don't do that. Bums me out once it do. Yes, exactly. I was super happy to hear too. Sometimes I can be really cynical about like companies and pet suppliers and things like that. I'm gonna shut this door because he's gonna vacuum. Okay. Sometimes I can be really cynical about that stuff, but Josh's Frogs has been like awesome. And I do like a lot of research before I look at it or like support a company or like agree to work with them and stuff, so. All right, so we got a lot of paper. It's gonna get loud here for a second, so I apologize. Let's see if I can show you guys this. Hold on one second. Oh no, I'm gonna leave that on. <laughs> oh! This is literally me every time I try to unbox one of these. Cause I've got two other ones before from Josh's Frogs. And it's, they're packaged so well, but also they're packaged to make me have a difficult time. Okay. There we go. Off to the side you go. Now you have to work on the next box. I wonder if you can see what the top of this box says. A box, it is a box. All right. There's one, two. Can you guys see what the box says? Let's see if I can turn it around and let you guys see. It is an Exoterra. So, we'll keep unboxing it. Yay, box. <laughs> okay. That's open. Dee -dee -dee. Sorry if I'm missing any comments right now. Obviously, I'm, I'm a little busy. So once we get this all unboxed and you guys can take a look at it, I'll tell you what I'm going to be getting to live inside of it. So pro tip, whenever you unbox one of these, I'll show you. This is a mistake I've made many times. I will cut these. Don't do that. They're very easy to pick up if you do not. Okay, I'll turn it on its side and pull it out. But if you don't, they're very hard to get out of the box. in the box so like I said they package them really well I've ordered numerous exoterras from them before and like they arrive and I've never had a single one cracked the one exoterra that I did not order from Josh's frogs don't lift with your back oh I'm just sliding it out I'm not even using my back so anyways the um one exoterra that I ordered that wasn't from Josh's frogs was an 181818 for re and it came like broken at the bottom so the other exoterras I've ordered from them have been a 24 by 18 by 12 and a 18, 18, 24. And both of those arrived in perfect condition. So, oh, what, did I, what am I running over here? Nothing. So why are you giving me a difficult time? Okay. <clears throat> now you can cut the tops off this little piece up here. There are 58 people here? Holy cow. That's way more than usual. Oh. I just hit that box. Please don't fall on me. It's literally like right next to my head. <sighs> okay. So, let's see if I can give you guys a good look. I'll turn this around. There it is. All right. So, this is the Exoterra. It's a littler one compared to other ones I have, but the species that will be going in here is not super big. So, does anyone have any guesses? No one is in school. <laughs> I literally thought about that when I uh, when I was posting because I thought, 
Oh wait, wait, is no one in school because of Veterans Day? I thought for a second that I was not gonna have anyone here because everyone was gonna be in school, but I'm old, so I don't have school anymore. So here it is, here's the inside of it. A super cute little enclosure. Type of frog, oh Samantha, you are right, you are right. Let's have some species guesses, shall we? Josh's frogs, <laughs> frogs. No, it's not a morning gecko, Aaron. Or Paige, I'm sorry, Woo! I hit this. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this back around. It is a frog. No, it is not a croc skink. This enclosure would not be big enough for a red-eyed crocodile skink. The ledge is what makes me have the struggle. Oh, if you know how I set up my uh, fire belly toads, then perhaps you will know why I use the magnatural sledges. Gold dust day gecko. It is a frog. I would love to have a tomato frog. No, it is not a hermit crab. I will never have hermit crabs unless, like, I... I know, I see Paige Aaron. That's why I accidentally read Aaron. Ugh. Move. There are boxes everywhere in this room. Red belly. Nope. I don't know any type of frogs. This type of frog is not a frog that you can find. It's not a Pac-Man frog. It's not a white tree frog. They would need a taller enclosure. Um, but this type of frog is a frog that I have not ever been able to find. You now are beautiful. Thank you very much. Um, I would never have been able to find this type of frog. And... I'll give you a hint, it's technically, technically, sort of a species that I already own. Did you talk about it in yesterday's video? In my live stream, I did, I did. That's why I was hoping a lot of people would be able to make the guess. Because I definitely mentioned it. I'm honestly stumped. That's okay, I'll just let everyone know. So, three, two, one. I am getting Bombina variegata, which are the yellow species, or yellow, which are the European species of fire belly toads. They have a yellow underside and a dark brown or like um, grayish uh, uh, above uh, top side, <laughs> above side. And basically, you cannot find them in the U.S. that well. Like they're really hard to get a hold of because they're kept in Europe. Like Europe doesn't like illegally import them or anything like that, as far as I'm aware. I have never come across this species. Oh, it got dark in here because of this box. <laughs> I have never come across this species um, on Craigslist, at rescues, on the internet. I'm so excited. And do you know why I came across them? I don't often look at like Josh's frogs for live animals because as you know I try not to like um, I, I try to adopt or get from uh, Craigslist but when I went to look at their frogs I saw that they had the yellow bellied fire bellied toad and I was literally I was as soon as I saw them I was like this is happening I am making the space this is happening because I have to because I absolutely love my fire bellied toads and like even if you, even when you read Josh's site, they'll say like, a lot of people consider them like underrated or like a novice frog. It's a fire belly toad, yeah, but they're not. They're like the coolest frog species because they interact with each other. They spend a lot of time in the water, so they're a lot of fun to watch, like swim around and they also climb and they also jump and they're so, so fun. So I have my fire belly toads in a uh, 24 by 18 by 12 exoterra. So this is obviously smaller. I will not be keeping more than two frogs in here. Um, I, I doubt I'll be getting a third uh, just due to like money reasons. I would like to have three, but I think I'll be just getting uh, two. I definitely want more than one because when they interact with each other, it is the most fun thing in the world. So I will also be doing a live stream um, when the frogs ship and like when I get them so I'll be doing a live unboxing of the frogs as well because I think that'd be a lot of fun and I'm not actually a hundred percent sure if they can live in this enclosure right away <laughs> because they're gonna be so little when they get here they're not gonna be full-grown fire bellies so like the fire belly toads you see in pet stores and stuff are typically like nine times out of ten uh, wild caught and so that stinks um, but the ones that I'm getting from Josh's frogs are captive bred definitely 100% captive bred and so they're not full grown yet Xmas is coming soon ask Santa for a third and a fourth <laughs> my fiance is actually buying them for me he's a he's amazing so I'm already asking Santa for two so I'm gonna show you guys 
an idea of how I'll have the tank laid out. So I'm already gonna have um, a sponge filter, and it's the exact same sponge filter. 52 animals, bro, you said 50 animals. 52, huh? I don't have 52, I'm confused. They look like a rotten lemon, they're so cute. They are adorable. Like, I love my Firebelly Toads so much. Like, they're such an underrated pet. Like, I don't know anybody else, like, in the pet community on YouTube who keeps them. If you know someone, let me know, because I'd like to look at what their setup is like. And I fully intend to one day have my Firebelly Toads in, like, a live setup, but I just, like, want to get more experience before I start throwing plants in there, because... Life plants can be challenging sometimes. They'll come with like little nasties on them and I don't really want to deal with all that. So I definitely want to get some more experience before I put live plants in there. But I definitely want to have like a nice plant to take for them someday. And um, I just really, really like them. Like I'm looking at them right now. They're just so cute. Um, so yes, this Exoterra, which is uh, 18 by 18 by 12, it has the same height. It's just six inches shorter than the other one. So Little nasties, yes, exactly. Little nasties, little, little, what are they called? Like little grimy worms, um, uh, parasites. What are they called? What is the word? What is the word? I'm confused. Why are you confused? What is the word for like something you don't want in your tank? That's like in your tank. I literally can't think about it. Anyways, they're like little stowaways on your plants, and then they come and hang out in your tank and infest everything. So I'm just not interested in like little snails and worms and stuff. Ew, yes, exactly. Parasites. Parasite. <laughs> I said parasite, but I mean like, yeah, parasite is a good word. I don't know. I just felt like I, I meant something else. Pests. Yes, pests. Thank you. I knew it started with a P. So anyway, this is a screen lid. If you don't know, exoterras have screen tops. So I'm going to move this box out of the way so I can get some more light in here because I done blocked all the light with this big box. Poopy, jumpy... Well, what the heck? I've wanted one for a while, but I need to do more research about them. Parasite is a good anime you should watch. I've never heard of that. Um, I'm very particular about animes, unfortunately. There's, like, very few that I really get into. My fiancé will watch anything and everything under the sun. And my sister watches most things, too. But, um, so I fully intend to have a sponge filter, like I do in my current Firebelly Toad tank. And name all your animals. Uh, not all, no. There's too many right now. Um... I can show you a list I have of some of them. So like, <laughs> so like, I'm gonna cover what the, the title of this video is so that I don't give myself away because I don't want to. But this right here is just, is just um, all the geckos. So, and that, I know them in like order of when I got them. So like, I don't even need to think about it. I just write them out from re all the way down. The frogs are poopy jumpy balls. I'm not an immature 11 year old, I swear. <laughs> when you had commented that, I was like, what is this in reference to? I'm curious. So, like I said a hundred times, I'm gonna take one of the f sponges from the f current frog sponge filter and use that to cycle the new one. Um, a lot of people don't cycle the frog tanks or um, like they'll just do water changes out of bowls and stuff. I 100% use a more aquatic like um, space than a more land space because I have noticed that frogs will spend more time in the water given the chance. So I offer a lot of water and then I use the Magnatural's ledges to build a land space. So once these get washed, um, they will be uh, hitting the water's surface and this will be where they live. My current frogs have earth toned magnatural's ledges and they have four of them because their enclosure is a lot bigger. I fully intend to get a third one of these. I just know that right now, please say hola, I'm from Mozambique. Okay, well I just said it, so there you go. Um, but my uh, frogs are a little, they're too little right now, so I think they're going to end up being in like a 10 gallon for the time being. It depends on how big they are. I'm going to make the judgment call when I see them. And then um, they'll have the filter from the other tank. And I miss having reptile. I love reptiles so much. And then after the filter is in there, they're going to have some of the um, like little fake leaves um, from the plants that I have. And my other frog tank as well, they have too many plants in their tank, they need to get rid of one of them. So I'm just going to take one and put it in here. And then I have some other plants already with like little leaves cut up and stuff that I'm going to float across the surface of the water. And then uh, the Magnatural lunges, and that'll be it. And they're super easy to care for. So I'm really excited to have a species that I've already been keeping. I want a reptile room like yours. Um, 
I mean, it's you can do it. It'll just take you some time. I mean, I've had a, this pet room since 2000 and, um, 2016, 2015, 2015. I may be getting a box turtle. That is so exciting. Um, but yeah, it's taken me a long time to get it to a place where I like it. And even now I'm still changing things all of the time. So this like giant shelf over here, let's see, I'll just show a second of it. So there's Roku's enclosure, so that giant shelf right there will 100% be replaced uh, by the end of this year with a larger shelf, <laughs> a shelf that's a foot wider, um, six inches bigger this way and then a foot longer. And it might be a little bit taller, which mm, could be problematic, uh, but it just depends on where you put the shelf. My pet room is a work in progress. We moved into our house just a little over a year ago. A year ago. Yeah, my pet room is literally always a work in progress because I'm always like getting new pets and stuff. I want to get an, an exo tire for my Leo, but one, too expensive right now. Two, I don't know how one would get how one would get heat pads onto them. You just adhere them to the bottom just like you will with an aquarium. I'm under the age of 12. How? Please show me your ways. <laughs> um, well, I'm 24 and I have I had a job until I got laid off. How cool was that? Um, but I'll have an, a job again soon. Um, but you have to make your own money and you have to build your own enclosures uh, and you have to buy nice enclosures and have good shelving and just put a lot of time into decorating. And like I said, it takes a long time to build it up. Like I have had this room since 2015. Um, and so I've been building it for over three years. Being in the reptile community, I find I'm always changing and upgrading everything. Same. What do you think about underground reptiles? There's enigmas and spiders. Help. I would say don't support them just based on that. Please do more videos of the rats, like cage cleaning and stuff. Okay. Okay. The, um, video I have coming on the rats next is going to be, uh, Thanksgiving themed. I waste all my money on my animals. <laughs> Same. <laughs> but I don't look at it as wasting. I'm like, I'm investing into their into their happiness um i wish i had a reptile room as for now they're all in my room mine started out in my room and it was getting too much oh well that's a derp i was thinking that because i have a non-adhesive one you can just put the non-adhesive one right underneath and it will still generate heat onto the glass so it doesn't have to be physically touching it uh the exoterra sit pretty low so just set it underneath and it should be fine that's not wasting money exactly just google underground reptiles review that's fair um but if they do sell enigmas and spider ball python morphs, I'm of the mindset that's a no-go. All of my animals are in my living room. I don't let guests come. <laughs> Your animals are guests, okay? Permanent residents. Um, I have three. Hi, how's it going? Hi, how are you? How much do geckos eat? Which species of gecko? Um, I have a um, three giant massive, giant massive? repetitive and unnecessary enclosures in my living room where we house our blue tongue skink and our two bearded dragons but then I have my salamanders so my axolotls and my tiger salamanders so they're all salamanders but there you go in my bedroom because it's cooler in there and then I also have my crested geckos in there but they're on heaters why do you think people buy kids Gucci it's not wasting its investment oh I mean hmm I don't, I don't, I would say it's wasting. I have two male dwarf hamsters, Tank and Frank. I have a tortoise named Rover. Those are some real interesting names. Tank and Frank. I like that they rhyme. Thank you so much for making pet videos. I've learned so much from your videos and now have a Leo gecko of my own. You're awesome. Thank you so much. How much does leopard geckos normally eat? I offer my leopard geckos, um, a appropriately sized superworm every other day to every two days or it may be an appropriately appropriately sized dubia roach it may be an appropriately sized hornworm but I typically only offer one of those things because I'm not offering something small I'm offering something that's like substantial I'm like I should get treats then it's like nine dollars I say sure even though the treat is an inch <laughs> oh my god I love salamanders same same so then my crested geckos are on heaters and then I have my fish tank in there as well and then this room. Hi, Shahar, how are you doing? I hope I just pronounced your name right. Shahar, is it? Um, but yeah, all my uh, reptiles basically are in this room. I only say Google because their reviews are so bad. Oh my god, are they really? I had no idea. That's, uh, that's not good. Oh, that's bad. Um, yeah, you pronounced it right. Oh, great. Thank you so much because I hate mispronouncing people's names, but also I'm really bad at it. So... I can't wait to get the frogs. 
Have you done a video for your Firefly toes? Can you quickly show their enclosure? Yes, I'm gonna go turn the light on and everything and move some stuff out of the way because I have some Christmas boxes in the way so that I can show their enclosure, but I'll be right back. I'll keep talking too, because look, there's like trash everywhere. Oh, stay. Oh, okay, cool, it just fell into the box. No problem. Um, Yes, I've done many videos on my fire belly toes. Not as many as I've done on my Leos, but like my fire belly, toe, fire belly toad videos don't get as many views, which is okay with me. I'll still make them, but they just don't get as many views, so not as many people access them. Um, but I have a care video out. I have an enclosure tour out. I have a couple of those, actually. I really want a pet room, too. I love having a pet room. I hated having everything in my bedroom. It was a disaster. Ugh, okay. So it's a little bit dirty. They're in need for a clean, but it's not too bad. So let me see if I can snatch you up here. Gotta go, glad I can make it. Bye, Chris. All right, so I'll hold on. My dog is at the door now, too. Oh, what a mess this room is. Look, there's stuff everywhere. Come on, bud. So, hi, Brie. Watch out, Jackson. You're going right where I need to sit, honey. Look at all my Christmas stuff. I have only started to decorate. It's going to be a process. So, that's a little dirty, like I said. They're in need of a clean. That's why the water looks a little low, too. Can you... Oh, goodness me, Jackson. He's sitting next to my cereal, eyeballing it. You better be careful, little dude. Do you live on your own? I live with my parents currently because we're saving money to buy a house. But we'll be buying a house next year. I got out of college and had all that debt, know what I'm saying? So there's a frog right there. Do you see their poop gets stuck to their... Uh-oh. You gonna try and eat my fan, my little hands? Eat! See? Dirty boy. And there's another one right there. They all literally just like pummel out of this enclosure. You gonna come out? You gonna jump? So that one is Asami. And this one down here is Bolin. <laughs> Oh, literally, if you get these frogs, they poop pretty much non-stop, and um, you have to clean the enclosure so much because they never stop pooping. Buying a house is so stressful, tell me about it. <laughs> like, I'm paying off my college loans and buying a house, and my uh, fiancé was in the military, so when he got out, he kind of had to, like, start all over job-wise, and yeah, it's just, it's just life, you know what I'm saying? But um, we'll be buying a house next year, so... <clears throat> trying to find the other two. They're they're hugging each other right now. Legend of Korra. Exactly, exactly. I'm losing my voice again. What the heck? <clears throat> I can't find the other two right now, but they're definitely in here. They're really cool. Thank you. What are you doing down there? Oh, that's silly. Why did you do that? Oh, wait, you might actually be Korra. I can't tell because I can't compare it to the other one. Let me see. Oh, I just hit my head on the shelf. That was very painful. I can't see your head. I tell them apart, Cora and Asami, by looking at their head. And then Mako and Bolin look pretty different, so they're easy. I literally can't find the other two. I don't want to, like, move it around too much because they're, they're probably just chilling. Oh, we got one way back there. Oh, you can't see anyway. That one is Asami, so this one's Cora right here. Thank him for a service. Oh, I will. I'm glad I could watch some of this live video, but I have to go. Bye, live videos. Goodbye. Thank you so much for being here. <laughs> so, yes, those are those two. We've got one in the back, and then I can't find Mako. But Mako is always the one that comes out last. And I don't know why, because Mako is, like, the most ferocious eater. I rescue my leopard gecko. That's great. Rescuing is such a good thing to do. I want to show you my animals. Do you have a, a Nimo? I think you mean Amino. Um, I do, but I don't know how to use it, so I would rather you just show me on Instagram. <laughs> so that's really cool thing about this species is they spend a lot of time in the water, as you can see. And uh, look, <laughs> there's Bolin. And they float, and they also just like hang out, their legs touching the bottom. So like when you go to a pet store, a lot of times they'll have them in water that's like 10 gallons high. Um, if they can't reach the bottom, it's not good for them, so you need to be able to make sure that the water isn't high enough, or isn't too tall. As long as their feet are touching the bottom and their nose is above water, that's the perfect height. <laughs> Which is why I was, like, concerned about the new ones I'm getting. I might not put them in an exoterra because they're just so little still. It might be easier just to put them in something that's, um, 
smaller. You two behave. What do I feed them? They eat everything that moves. So, um, my fingers, for example. No, they eat dubia roaches, mealworms. They eat, um, what else do they eat? Um, shoot, I'm drawing a blank. Dubia roaches, mealworms. You can feed them chopped earthworms. You can feed them chopped red wigglers. You can feed them crickets. You can feed them, um, uh, little tiny hornworms. You can feed them waxworms. Anything that's appropriately sized, pretty much you can feed them, and they will eat it because they are just like little food gobblers. <laughs> Do you hear them? Of course not when I'm making a sound. Yeah. Mm hmm. So they literally just make those sounds. Frogs are garbage cans. <laughs> Exactly. They literally just make those sounds like all day and all night and hang out with each other all day and all night and just jump around and play. What was the hardest time with any of your animals? Uh, probably when I first got um, Sam and Gilly learning how to deal with um, their um, enigma syndrome and their severe like malnourishment. That was really hard. But there's been a lot of like hard moments when it comes to different uh, species I've kept in terms of like if they're special needs. So I could probably make a video all about that. I don't want anyone to like feel like I'm having like a sob story though. Cause like at the end of the day, any sort of like tiny difficulty that I've had has been well worth it. So, but yeah, those are two of the frogs since the other two are coming forward. Um, but the frogs, they're full grown. The frogs I'm getting are gonna be smaller than that. So, Let's put you guys back up, turn this around, not on my face, thankfully, because yesterday I almost put it on my face and that would have been horrifying. Oh, uh, we don't want to face Roku because his light all messed set up. Here we go. So, as you guys can see, the magnatural sledges act as like the little like earth space or like land space for them, and I fully intend to do the exact same thing with the little um, uh, yellow bellied ones. I love watching my African clawed frog. He eats a lot. I want one so bad. Like, there's so many animals that I, I know I could easily care for um, and that I've had, like, some limited experience with already, but I don't currently have, but I don't have any space. So, I love your hair pushback. Thank you so much. So, when I have um, a house, like, next year, I'm going to be getting some animals, but for now, it's pretty much just waiting because I don't have the space. So, oh, are you okay? My dog has been very needy today. What about a snake? I don't want any snake or any animal that eats uh, mice or rats or like any like bird or anything like that. So my friend is having a really hard time with one of her geckos right now. If you guys give her some well wishes on Instagram. I saw it's about her gecko's tail, right? Um, I actually had a really similar, similar experience, so I was going to reach out to her. I don't think that the entire tail is... Um, is injured. I think it's just that one spot. I think that if that heals well, I don't think that the rest of the tail will have to go. So I need to reach out to her. Um, you okay? No, you cannot have my cereal. Oh, for anyone, if you all want to really hate me for a second, I eat cereal with no milk. Have my entire life. I refuse to eat milk in my cereal. And that's even when I used to drink milk. Uh, I don't drink milk and I haven't for a few years now. But um, back when I used to drink milk, um, I didn't put it in my cereal. So everyone always has made fun of me for that. So, milk just makes it soggy. Exactly. Exact. I want to have crunchy cereal. I don't want to have soggy cereal without. Oh, I want to see what the rest of Brie was gonna say. Oh my God. So do I. Since I was five, I usually use a cup. Yeah. When I was younger, I would drink a cup of milk and then eat like a spoonful of cereal. I used to eat cereal without milk when I was younger. Literally, I'm like, I love that all these all you people are like, yeah, I do it too. Cause like I literally got made fun of so hard for that for like my, my entire life. <laughs> So, whatevs. Cereal without milk isn't bad. I know, exactly. Try it with OJ. Look, I don't like orange juice. I just like the texture of cereal with milk. Yeah, it's too soggy. I don't like it. I'm, mm -mm, not for me. I tried it. I like. I knew I didn't want it when I was younger. I didn't even bother trying it. And then I went to my friend's house and her mom had like poured cereal for us already. And I was too shy to say I didn't like it. So I ate it. But I was literally so like grossed out by it that I almost puked in the car. Cereal is originally crunchy for a reason. Exactly. I don't eat it quick enough and it turns to sludge. Exactly, I'm a really slow eater, so that's why I don't I don't like it with milk. I'm surprised so many of you are very similar to me because I've been made fun of this for my entire life. Like literally everybody I've ever told has been like, you're disgusting. <laughs> Thanks, I know. Speaking of something that's kind of funny, 
yesterday I got a comment on YouTube on one of my videos and the comment was talking about firstly my bearded dragon's eyes which is completely fine because his eyes are weird the second thing that this individual said was that I need to not wear red lipstick it doesn't suit me and that I'm wearing too much makeup I'm like in that video I'm not wearing fake lashes or um, eyeliner or eyeshadow just just a red lip just a red lip was too much for him it was a, it was a, a matte red lip it was too much I just thought it was a really funny comment because like sometimes on the internet people will just like leave the weirdest comments and I'm fully ready for that because wear fluorescent green lipstick I totally would um, but like sometimes on the internet you just like you know you're gonna get weird comments um, and that was just one of them and I appreciated it you can't make everyone happy no you certainly cannot no that's something I knew before even starting my channel that's actually when people always ask me like oh should I start a channel like well, what should I do and I'm always like just start it and have a good self-esteem going into it because the internet can make you feel um, and this is really hasn't happened to me but I know that it's a possibility will you back up so I can see your shirt this is a design that was made uh, by what the hecko you're a gecko on Instagram and it has all of my leopard geckos up until I got Mira so all of my leopard geckos up until the beginning of this year isn't it cute but yeah that's on my uh, my merch shop along with other designs that she made like if your favorite gecko is just Eddard for example you can get just Eddard on a shirt and um, or if your favorite gecko is just Vash or just uh, I think that's that's Fritz yeah you really suit the red lipstick. Don't listen to them. Thank you. Uh, weird comments like that are honestly hilarious. Like, where would you want you look fabulous? Exactly. Like, that doesn't bother me. That's why I say about having a good self-esteem when you start a channel. What pets do you have? I have <laughs> African fat tail, leopard geckos, many of them. I have a cave gecko, a fire skink, four, four fire belly toads, soon to be six, um, crested geckos, gargoyle gecko, crested geckos, a uh, tiger salamander, two axolotls, a beta fish, two narrate snails, three African dwarf frogs. Downstairs I have um, two beta dragons and a blue tongue skink. And I also have dogs and I also have rats. I think I got everyone. Have I missed the unboxing? Oops, you did, but I will show you. Right here, this is what I unboxed, and that's a bit of an enclosure. I have the lid's off right now. And then I also unboxed these two. Mag Naturals ledges, and I revealed that I will be getting um, two yellow belly fire belly toads, which are the uh, Bombina variegata. I currently have uh, Bombina orientalis, and yeah, I'm just really, really excited. Oof, I'm late. It's okay. Oops, a shirt with all the animals will be consistent of the whole shirt being taken over by the animals. Yeah, exactly. Jeffrey should name a red lipstick after you. I would literally die. I would literally die. I learned so much about you from leopard geckos. I learned so much of, oh my god, I can't read. I learned so much from you about leopard geckos. Thank you. You are so welcome. Thank you so much for just saying that. It's very nice. I appreciate it. Um, being able to share, like, my experiences, both the good and the bad, being able to share what I have learned, being able to share my animals has been such a do you ship your merch to the UK? It's on Teespring, and Teespring does ship to the UK. I froze my wax worms, but they still eat them from thawing. Oh, that's fine. Um, but, um, yeah, being able to share has been, like, the coolest thing. Like, I was posting videos last year, but I wasn't really, like, um, like, head into it. Like, I really wasn't paying a lot of attention to it. Um, I still managed to get a thousand subs, though, which was pretty awesome. And then, up until now, I've been actually paying attention to my channel, I've actually been really wanting to like pay attention to the analytics, pay attention to what I'm uploading, actually script out videos, film videos, post numerous times a week on a schedule as best as I can get one. Um, and it's been a really great year. Like I'm, I'm planning a video for the end of the year called um, like um, like an end of the year analysis or like this year in review. I plan to do that every year and then at the start of every year I plan to do a, what I'd like to achieve this year. It helps me keep my goals uh, and it helps me keep to my goals and help me set them. Um, and I think it's also great to communicate that with you guys as well. So when I do my this year in review video, when I do my this year in review video, I probably will cry because it has been such a great year. 
My juvenile gecko has been spending all her time in the humid hide even after shedding. Should I be worried? It could be because of brumation. My uh, African fat tail does that. I'm so glad you post so often. I'm super picky about which channels I watch, so I always have something to watch now. I'm actually very picky about which channels I watch as well, so I, I relate to that. Thank you, though. That was really sweet. I like when people, you know, trust me, and, and that's a really good feeling. When my mice die, I'm putting them in plant pots. Not to sound morbid, I think that's okay. Um... I have always buried, like when I had rats pass away, I've always uh, buried them. Do you use RepTi-Safe or just tap water? I've heard distilled is bad. So where I live, we have well water and our water is not treated with chemicals like uh, chlorine or anything like that. So my water is completely safe to use. But I've also used bottled water before, so I think either's fine. What do you think about people rescuing feeder rats? Probably not a good idea. I've even done it once myself and I don't recommend it. It doesn't lead to good things um it leads to like unhealthy rats because they typically have like less uh they have like lesser genetics it also leads to behavioral problems oh i should probably plug this phone back in what am i thinking um but yeah i i can't recommend it um i know it's like a it's a good thing that you're doing um or at least it feels like a good thing i know it did when i did it and i don't regret what i did because i still really loved chester but it was like it was not a good situation. Um, and it was a very hard time to get him to come around. He would attack bite um, me and my fiance and um, it just wasn't good. Um, especially after having had rats. Um, I had my three girl rats that I adopted and then I had three boy rats, two of which I got from a breeder and then one who, <laughs> who was a literal rescue. <laughs> he like showed up in my garage one day and he wasn't a wild rat so that's crazy um but i captured him and kept him uh that's a whole story for another day but um don't worry he 100 percent was not wild i consulted with people um on like a rat forum he was 100 percent not a wild rat especially with the way he was interacting with me and my family who were out in the garage i'd love to hear that story i actually have it on my like personal channel i think it's private now but i can make it public again i shared it after he died i think i made the video after he died um, everyone always says they have, I don't want to cry, oh god, I'm a very emotional person. Everyone always says that they have like a heart and soul rat, or like a rat that's like their rat, like it's the one that connects with them the best, and I had, I've had this for a few different rats, but like only one at a time, so Louie was one of my heart and soul rats, and the connection I had with him, the trust that I had with him, well I never would have thought that I would have got that from a rat who literally just randomly showed up in my garage one day. I'm getting choked up. <sighs> I don't like it. I don't like it. That's why I don't like talking about my rats that often because they live such short lives and then they're gone. I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to do it. Anyways, new subject. Um, rats are amazing pets. Um, so if you ever have the chance to have one and you do it the right way, they're incredible, even with their short lives. I barely have 14 subs, I'm so proud, meaning my friends. You should be proud however many subs you have because uh, it takes time to build up, it takes time to get there. So I fortunately had a little bit of a following on Instagram when I started my YouTube, so I was able to get um, some of that audience to my YouTube, so that helped. But if you're just starting out on YouTube without like an audience on other social media, then it does take time to build up and you should be appreciative for every single like step that you have. 10, 20, 30, 100, 1,000, 10,000, which when I hit 10,000 can be a really good feeling for me because I went into this year with the very unreasonable goal of hitting 10,000 by December 31st ain't gonna happen. I'm gonna get like 3,000 away. I'd love to give owning rats another chance someday. Um, they're amazing. The boys I have right now, I don't have like, as they're not my heart and soul rats, unfortunately. Um, I love them to death, but they're not, they don't have, I don't have the connection I had with them like I had with Billy or with Louie. Their connection with me is a lot more like what I have with Patrick or Lily. Um, whereas they like me and I like them, but like, I don't know, maybe it'll be different as they get older. Because with, with Billy, Billy loved me from the moment that I met him. He was always really easy to hold. He was always giving kisses. He was the sweetest. And then with Louie, it was um, like a situation of like, I had to put so much effort into getting him. I spent like 30, 
not 30, I spent like 15 hours over five days and I was like, um, in the middle of August, it was hot outside and my garage, my, like, is like a mess, like it's, there, well it's not anymore but it used to be, there was like stuff everywhere. And so he was, he was living in there, um, and he was eating like crayons, he was eating onions and like chicken bone, and I, so I just started putting regular rat food out for him. Um, and I put out a cage and he went into the cage and ate and pooped in the cage So that was one sign that he wasn't a wild rat was that he was comfortable with the confinement and also pooping inside of the cage and eating inside of the cage He also drank out of the water bottle as well But it took me five days to get him and I was using every bit of advice that I could get from this forum that had uh, That was about rats and the, the thread is still there It's like seven pages long because so many people were invested in helping me get this rat and then I kept them posted and updated over the two years that I had him. Two incredible years that I had with this rat. No idea how old he was. He was full grown when I got him. So he had to have been like four, five, six months old at the time at least. Um, incredible rat. Incredible boy. And, you know, I had him house alone for a little bit while I was getting uh, brothers for him. And then he was nothing but kind to them. I was like really apprehensive about like putting my rats together. I had never introduced rats before. And so when Billy and Patrick, who are brothers that I got from a breeder, because I needed to get younger ones, were um, like a few months old and they were like appropriately sized, I introduced them and not a single moment, there was not a single moment where Louie wasn't happy to have them and vice versa, except where there's like one uh, hanging cube that he really thought was his and I had to like take it out for a couple weeks so that he didn't fight with them over. But like, other than that, every other moment that they ever shared with each other was nothing but like the most beautiful, harmonious bliss. Like they had meant, like they were meant to be together from like the day I got them. It was amazing. And they all passed away. They're all, they're all gone now. I don't think that I'll ever have that situation again. I'm starting to choke up again. Oh my god. <sighs> so that's why I'm like, I don't want to say I'm out of love with having rats because I love my rats that I have now, but it makes it really hard when you had such like a good connection with the rats before and they're gone now. And then you don't have as great of one with the boys you have now. Um, I got my two boys that I have now at four months old. If I had got them when they were babies, it'd be a lot easier. Um, but they're four months old and they're good boys. They're really sweet. They've never tried to bite me. They can be a little squeaky when it comes to handling, but other than that, they're fine. Um, but I just, you know, it's hard because, and I've seen uh, Emmy at um, Emmy's World on YouTube talk about how, you know, with some rats you have that heart and soul connection, but with others you love them, but it's not the same. And it's so true. And I really wish it wasn't, but it is. Your emotions are me. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm a very emotional person. Like, oh, it's exhausting sometimes though. Like sometimes I'll literally just like, I'll come in my pet room and I'll just be so happy that I have the animals that I have that I'll just weep, like weep happy tears for no reason. And then I'll go make food because food is comfort. But like, I, if I look back a couple years ago, I never ever would have thought that I have what I have now. Like the animals that I have now, the connection that I have with them, the incredible work that they've let me put into them when it comes to like the enigmas or like any rescued ones. I'm just so thankful because I don't know. I don't know. Is that weird? I'm just really, really thankful that I get to have them, get to get to know them for whatever part of my life that they're with me, you know, because rats are only alive for two to three years. So, you know, I get to know them their whole life, but they only get to, I only get to have them for, you know, a short period of my own life, but I'm so thankful for the time that I get them. Wow, it's so offensive that you're human. Be emotional, girl. It shows your awesomeness even more. Uh, thank you so much. I know it's not, like, offensive, but some people can be annoyed by it, or, like, some people are uncomfortable with displays of emotion. My dad is one of those people, and I'm a very emotional person, so I feel bad sometimes. But, like, I'm just very, very passionate. You are an amazing pet mom. Thank you so much. This live stream is going so well. I feel very comfortable right now. Um... But yeah, that was the unboxing. I'm sitting behind, I'm literally like leaning on it. It's sad when people neglect their rats. Don't get me started. I've seen so many neglect cases and I've seen so many situations where people just don't put as much effort. Screw your dad, he's a great man, don't say that. I'm talking to someone, here's reptiles are worthless, beats a person up. I don't like, 
when people say that like reptiles don't have emotions I'm like excuse yo ignorant behind because that is not true okay like all reptiles are different sure some may express themselves more than others sure but to say that the borderline all reptiles do not ooh, you wrong you wrong but yeah my dad's an incredible man he's just like he's just one of those men that's like really like um like, he is a very emotional person, but he has trouble expressing that. And so when someone else expresses theirs, especially crying, he gets very, like, nervous. Because he, like, wants to comfort but doesn't know how. I see a lone rat in a hamster cage for sale once. Um, I see that pretty terribly on Craigslist. Um, fortunately, my dad is the same way. I think it's a dad thing. Um, there's plenty of situations where I've seen where rats are being really well cared for, so I don't want to discredit the amazing people out there who keep rats. Reptiles do have emotion, they just can't show facial expression. I know, and people just automatically take facial expression as the only way to show emotion, but I'm like, excuse me, no it is not. It's taken me a long time to be okay with the idea of having rat again, but I think I'm almost ready. One of my previous ones, much I was closest to, had a tumor on her hip, it grew and spread so fast. My girls had, um, mammary tumors, and, like, one girl just developed, like, four of them all at the same time, and... She was such a fighter. Like, despite how, like, they grew so, so fast, she was like, mm, ain't bothering me. And she'd still run around and she'd still bite me because she was feisty. The first th first rats I ever had, I adopted from um, uh, Northwest Indiana Chinchilla Rescue. My leopard gecko has facial expression. Excuse me. I think leopard geckos do. I think they're one of, like, the most personable reptiles. Like, some other ones, like my fire skink, he does not emote. But my leopard geckos certainly do like they literally smile they can look grouchy they can look happy they can look excited i definitely agree with you there because i mean i have 25 of them and i literally get to see different faces all the time but like my uh, fire skin he emotes nothing only pure hatred for me <laughs> uh, i love him though he is brumating he has not been coming out in the mornings to bask he has been rejecting food except like once a week I hate it. What was I talking about? I have literally forgotten. I feel like Leos are underrated. They are so underrated. I feel like I keep a lot of underrated pets. Like, I keep a lot of, um, I keep, like, the fire belly toes and people, I feel like they're really underrated. People just write them off as, like, easy to keep, um, frogs. And then I keep a lot of leopard geckos and I think that they're the most incredible reptile. Like, um, who was it that just made that? Uh, video 10 reasons why they love uh, leopard geckos you were talking about rescuing from a chinchilla society oh yes northwest indiana chinchilla rescue she had some rats that were also for adoption and it was the first time i ever owned rats and i did a ton of research i got a really cool cage it wasn't a double coordination but it was something else and then um i went there and i got three sisters that had been born there and then adopted out and then the person returned them like six months later. Um, I don't know if she didn't handle them that much, but like Lily was a biter and she bit me and that was okay. I was fine with it because it's who she is. She was a little mean rat, but I loved her to death because she's still so much fun and she was still running around and have a good time with her sisters. Um, and then there was Cookie and Penelope. I did not name them. Their names came from the rescue. And I had them from when they were eight months old until they were just over two. The first one to pass away was Cookie. She died um, real quick. I mean, literally, she was fine one day, and the next day I came home from school, and she was dying in her hammock. So I held her, and she died in my hands. And then um, the other girls died like two months later. I know um, Lily had really big mammary tumors, and Penelope had like she was going like she didn't have very long so I decided to get them put to sleep together so that they oh my god I'm not gonna cry <sighs> so that they could die together so they could be happy together and then I buried them right next to Cookie and at that point I had had already Louie, Billy, and Patrick and so I had them for a long time I had Billy for three years and four months which I is incredible he, he was three years and four months old when he died so I had him for like three years and two months or whatever but he, incredible lifespan for a rat um, but he had a lot of health problems in the last few months. And then, uh, Louis I had for two years, and I didn't know how old he was, so he was probably, he was probably well over two and a half. And then, um, Patrick died, uh, he was over two years old. I think he was, like, two years and three months, two years and four months. Gingers have souls. <laughs> it's very true. Um, but yeah, so, 
um, they passed away. Chester was a rat that had to be housed alone because he would fight other rats and he would fight me and he was just a mean rat. Um, but I loved him and he, uh, he died not too long after Billy died and he was a little bit over two years old, maybe two and a half. I could, didn't know his age either because he was, um, almost full grown. He was full grown when I got him. And then I gave it a few weeks, um, and then I was, I had an empty rat cage and oh, I tell you what, I did not know having an empty rat cage was going to hurt as much as it did. Like, that empty shell of a cage, literally when I would come in this pet room, would like stare at me from the corner and I would feel just like a sense of sadness. So I said, I'm getting more rats and um, I was planning on getting three, but then I saw, I saw um, Finn and Remy and they were on Craigslist. The person, uh, their owner was rehoming them because they no longer wanted to keep any of their rats. So they were rehoming three older ones and then they had Finn and Remy left and so I decided I would take Finn, Finn and Finn and Remy, and um, they were four months old at the time, I think, December, January, February, okay, they were like three months old at the time, um, and then I've had them since, did I get them in March or April? I think it was the end of March, so they were like three or four months old, um, and then I've had them since, and they have the uh, double coordination all for themselves, but, you know, having rats, like, I've owned them longer than I've owned any other species except, like, a dog. Um, I've had rats longer than leopard geckos, longer than axolotls, longer than crested geckos, longer than beta dragons. In fact, like, this whole family really started off with rats, and I have, um, pictures of all of them up there. There's some Christmas decorations, too. But I have pictures of all the rats, you know, Chester, uh, Billy, Louie, Patrick, Cookie, Lily, and Penny, because they are where it started, rats are where it started, where this whole family, like, burgeoned into what it is today. And, um, so I always want to keep them with me and remember that, you know, I have this because of three girl rats that I adopted one day. Have you had any other small animals or just rats? When I was younger, I had hamsters, but, like, I did not care for them well, as most children from the 90s, uh, did, or from the early 2000s. Um, but no, I have not kept any small animals since having rats or since being an adult. I'm not a huge fan of small animals. Your parents give you a rat when you were five, Paige? Oh my god. See, like, something that I'm really uh, enthusiastic about when it comes to, like, the social media and the channel, um, is that people who are becoming parents or people who are parents now will see that there is a better way to do things. Um, and I have, I have, like, talked to many parents uh, who are, you know, parents of young children right now who say that, you know, they watch my videos to get the proper understanding of, like, getting a leopard gecko for their child and how to, you know, teach their kid to properly handle it. And I think that that's one of the most incredible things that's come from having this channel because if you can change an animal's life and you can change a person's life and having a healthy, well-cared-for animal, it's the most rewarding thing possible ever that could come from this channel. So, I love when situations like that happen, but there will always be the parents who go to the pet store and listen to the pet store advice. And not even just parents, but people in general. There will always be the people who do that. And that's disheartening. Some people judge reptiles by looks, but they don't know unless you have one. Exactly. So a lot of people can think like, like when people are like, ew, snakes are gross, snakes are mean, snakes bite, blah, blah, blah. but like snakes can be really incredible pets too. So I feel like a lot of people, you know, judge like insects or snakes or reptiles or or like sorts of gross looking amphibians um, before even having them. And I think that that's generally just human nature. We are kind of afraid of creepy crawly things, things that move fast or don't have like furries, uh, you know, don't have like fuzzy cute hair. So I can, I get where it comes from, but I don't agree with it obviously because I have reptiles and I love them to death and think they're incredible animals. Snakes are the best. Yeah, I would, I like snakes. I would like to interact with and hold a snake, um, but I would not like to own a snake due to the fact of feeding it. This is a long live stream, 73 minutes. I'm getting real congested too. I think it's because I like almost cried like three times and my nose is like, girl, make up your mind. Are you going to cry or not? Honestly, I'd rather be bit by a snake than my cat. Oh my God. Cat scratches are the most painful things. I've never been bit by a cat. I've only been scratched and it's oh, so painful. I've been bit by my geckos and it doesn't feel like anything. Like it's like for a second it's a pinch and then it's over with, done with. You don't even know the difference. Yeah, rats are good pets. 
it's nice to reminisce about them sometimes even if it is emotional because they're no longer with me so it's all I can do. I have three daughters and 20 animals. I love animals so I like teaching my daughters about them and they enjoy it too. That's incredible. I'm getting a new animal baby on Wednesday. What is it? And if you don't want to stay here, you can message me later. All my thermostats just clicked. <laughs> it's so funny because like these two will click and then all those will click. It's like they just go in order. Click, 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 click. Rabbit scratches are a lot worse. Oh, I've never been scratched by a rabbit. I'm allergic to cats. I, I'm not allergic to any animals as far as I'm aware. I'm allergic to grass. Rabbit scratches are horrible. Oh, okay, well then I take your guys' word on it because I don't want to be scratched by them. <laughs> I might have when I was younger, but like I can't remember if it hurt. I'm so congested. I have scars from rabbits. Oh my god. Sheesh. Why are their claws so sharp? Like, what is the purpose of having sharp claws? Rabbits get scared. Is that why they scratch? Or is it just because, like, they've got those big old feet. They're always moving. My dog is sleeping like an angel. Can you handle your Leos? I can, but right now they are sleeping, so I do not want to bother them. If I, wish I, I wish I had, like, more animals that are awake at this time of day, but literally just the frogs are, and you can't handle them. They just out straight and they kick rapidly. Yeah, oh, they jut out straight. I said just. Yeah, I have seen rabbits, like, them big old back feet. Man, they're strong. No, they get scared usually, and yep, you get raked. People who keep their rabbits make me sad, just, like, litter box train them. People who keep their rabbits make me sad. Oh, so, like, they just, like, let them poop everywhere? I've seen mostly litter trained ones. All my animals in the chameleon's claws are the worst, and he's not even full grown. They do have those little, like, pinchers, don't they? Because, like, they hang on. I don't have any chameleons. Rabbit scratches are only bad if you don't take care of them properly, if you don't clip their nails properly. Well, it sounds like their legs are really strong, so like even maybe if they are clipped, it can still scratch you. Oh, people who keep rabbits outside. You can't hold them tighter to stop them kicking. That just makes them freak out more. Oh man, rabbits sound like a lot of fun. Like, I thought guinea pigs were cute until I saw how much they pooped. How much do you feed your bearded dragons that they eat a lot? So, I feed them um, as many greens as they will eat in a day. And then, um, Franklin is older, so he does not get superworms or, or doobie roaches as often as Nova. Nova is under a year old, so she gets them daily still. Um, but she gets, uh, as many as she'll eat in, like, a couple minutes, because she is an overeater. I trim rabbit's nails for people, so I trim a lot of long nails for crazy rabbits. Oh, so that's why you get cut. Oh my god. I had an 8-pound loppy eared. Is that big? Because 8 pounds sounds like a lot for a rabbit. But I know they have, like, giant rabbits. Like, um, what are those ones called? The really big ones, Flemish Giant, and they have really strong grips, they dig their claws into you. Delightful. Yeah, the only time I've ever really been scratched by a reptile is my blue tongue skink. He is, he's strong. Like, he's got some real strength in his legs. I'm getting a new Velveteen this December, I'm so excited. A Velveteen rabbit? Is that a type of rabbit? I'm not sure. Have you ever considered doing a hedgehog rescue? I have no hedgehog experience and I would have to do a lot before I considered getting one. Turnip greens are the only greens I can get my beard to eat. Flemish giant, yeah, that's the one I've heard of. Um, turnip greens are a great source of uh, greens for beta dragons and in fact, they're my um, favorite to use. My beta dragons absolutely love turnip greens and they are hesitant to eat other greens. Like I, I can sometimes get them to eat mustard or um, dandelion greens but they definitely prefer turnip above the others. I had a flimmy and they hurt you a lot when they scratch you. I imagine because they're like the size of dogs. They're they're big. But they're so cute. <laughs> Rabbit, yeah, it's a really soft lop eared but oh that sounds precious. I do like lop eared. They're very cute. Does anyone ever have like their wisdom teeth grow in wrong because I have one grown in wrong and it's making my, my mouth hurt right now? My rabbit was like a dog. He even played fetch. That's so cute. I had a Flemmy too when I was five. You had a Flemish giant when you were five. And then someone asked if I could show the beardies. <sighs> My brother is cleaning downstairs right now. So I don't want to go like expose him to the internet. Head talks are the best. Oh god, so many comments. Head talks are the best. You do not want to get bit by them though. That's a bad bite. My rabbit binkied into my face once. What's binkied? More than half. Oh. Whoa, more than half my size. I used to nap with that. It's crazy. How frequently do you clean your leopard gecko cages? I spot clean every time I feed them, so like there's not poops all over the place. Um, some of the little geckos poop more often, so it might go like a couple days, like they might have a couple poops before I get to it. Um, but I spot clean, and then I do like a nice, like clean down, like every couple of weeks. And then their water bowls and their human hides get changed every week. 
My wisdom teeth are in and fine. Lucky, this one and this one grew in, no problem. This one grew in, crooked. How frequently, oh, I read that already. Wisdom teeth are the worst. I've been putting off getting mine taken out. I don't want to get mine taken out unless I have to. Her beauty is sort of different rooms. Very true. I had my wisdom teeth removed earlier this year. It was so painful even when they were growing in. I Mine grew in fine without pain, but this one is causing me pain because like sometimes it rubs against my cheek. Do you have siblings? I have an older sister, a younger sister, and a younger brother. My boyfriend's bearded dragon absolutely loves mustard greens, which I'm so thankful for because my last bearded dragon would only eat cilantro for greens. Oh my goodness. Yeah, Franklin really liked mustard greens for a long time, and then he didn't want to eat them anymore, and he went to turnip. I have a wisdom tooth growing into my cheek. Oh, I've had it filed down, but it's grown in more. Oh my god. How do you spot clean the inside of the glass? I just take the acrylic door off and clean it down. My Leos get mad if I spot clean too much. Mine can get over it. <laughs> when I go to feed them, I just like drop the worm and then I'll like pick up their poop. It's when they're happy and jump around. If you look up on YouTube, you'll know what I mean. Oh, okay. Is it bad if you don't clean your gecko cage frequently? Yes, because it's nasty and you wouldn't want to live in filth. So try and consider like one poop, two poop, fine. You know, three poop, four poop, you're, you're getting there. And then when you have, like, five poops, that means you haven't cleaned it in, like, two weeks. Because they only poop, like, every other day. So, vinegar for spot cleaning glass. I have um, acrylic doors, and I just have to use a little bit of, like, water to get anything off of them. Like, if they get some calcium on there, or if they get, um, um, like, a, like any bug guts or anything on it. I just use a little bit of water and a wash rag, and it comes off fine, and then it looks clean again. So, no problems there. I'm still congested. <laughs> oh well. See, I'm pretty sure those are the same two frogs that were out earlier. It looks like Bolin and Cora still. What about your little goofballs? I cannot wait to meet the new ones. I wish, you know what, I don't have... <gasps> My laptop is in here. Okay, give me one second. I will show you what they look like for anyone who doesn't want to leave the stream and Google them real quick. It's okay, Jackson, we're not leaving. You want to say hi to everybody, though? I'm literally leaning on this exoterra. <laughs> come here, you want to come say hi to everyone? Come here. Oh, I know, you're so sleepy. Hi, honey, good morning. Oh, hello. Say hi, everybody, sleepy baby. Why? <laughs> I know, you're so tired, huh? Yes, a good boy. Oh, he's an angel. Yes. How often do you hold your geckos? I hold the ones that prefer to be held more often than the ones that don't. Um, but I would say, like, at least a couple times a month to give them a good check. Last time, oh god, so many comments. I'll read them in a second. Do you have any names picked out for your new frogs? I have a couple names. I have a black lab and his name is Jack. That's so cute. Are you done? You want to go sit down? Okay, here you go, honey. Hi, baby. His butt is still sitting in my lap. Hi, honey. I know, you're a very good boy. Yes, you are. You're a very good boy. Yes, you are. You're such an angel. When you first started having animals, did you tank hoard? I had so many aquariums and I hated it so much, which is why I moved to gecko bookshelves and um, exoterras. I have to wait for my fiance so I can clean my crested gecko tank. He wants nothing to do with me and I don't want him to drop his tail being stressed by me cleaning the tank. My crested gecko Re is like Satan wrapped up in a cute little crested gecko. She hates me and will bite me if she feels like she wants to. Other days she's nice though, so like she's like two personalities in one. Um, last time I leaned on Exeter, I broke it. I'm trying not to because I don't want to. I literally just bought it. Um, so that would stink. Oh, I just hit my elbow on it. Here, you're going to go back a little bit because I'm not trying to break you. I just bought you. Um, but yeah, I was like not thinking about it and just leaning on it. Real smart, Jessica. Real smart. Um, when you first started having, oh, okay. So I read all the comments. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, so I am picking up. Um, Josh's Frog's website right now. <coughs> I'm like having like congestion right now. Romeo and Juliet? No, it'll be um, some sort of anime names. How big are your gecko cages and can I see how you set them up? So what you're looking at right now are my smaller gecko bookshelves and then the boxes are in the way but those are my bigger gecko bookshelves. Remove the top layer of Eco Earth always. Absolutely, because it absorbs the urates. Nice, these. So we're going to go, I will show you guys how I use this site. So opinions on Lugartis bedding for Leo. I am not familiar with that. Natsu and, oh, we already have a reptile name, uh, 
is it Urza? I think that's exactly what he calls her, but I'm not familiar with that. We have a crescent gecko with that name. Look, that's my cereal. <laughs> okay, so this is Josh's Frog's website. Okay, so we're going to head over to Animals for Sale. Zuko and Mai, that's precious. Oh, sorry, it's like shaking because it's bouncing on one knee. So Animals for Sale. And then um, we're going to scroll down to Toads because that's where my toads are. And then we're going to go to this one right here. So as you can see, they have 16 of them. They started out having 18. So someone bought two of them last week. Black out the divider. What divider? Uh oh, am I doing something wrong here? Oh, okay. Phew. Oh my god, I was like, am I, am I, am I putting out something I should be putting out? Um, so this has like all the information about the species and about how they're currently being cared for and look at that look at how extensive that is Josh's frogs is awesome so I'm gonna show you guys some pictures so we have let's click on them let's make them big here we go so that's the top how cute and then um there's another there's another top picture there's a back picture Sorry, I keep like, whenever I click it, moves my, my my computer. So there's two of them. And then this is the gorgeous underside. So I'm just going to turn my brightness up a little bit. Where is it? There we go. All right, so there's that gorgeous underside. And then here's another picture of the underside. And my current Firebelly Toads look like, let's see if I can, I don't know if I have anything popped up, like my most recent searched. Let's go to Google. And then we'll do fire belly toad. Yeah, the brown and yellow is gorgeous. So you guys can see what mine look like, but it might be easier to see like the difference. Look at this fat one. I love it so much. Okay, so see how this one's like green? It has a little spot of brown, but it's like mostly green with like this orange red underbelly. So that's what Bombina orientalis looked like. My um, hot side temps are 89. Well, the thermostat is set to 89. Um, and so here again, you can see the bright green with the orange underbelly. And that is very common for the, um, Bombina orientalis. This is wrong. Never do this. Never cohab fire belly toads and fire belly newts ever. But topic for a different day, I suppose. Um, but yeah, they're super cool looking. Like, they're really, really gorgeous. Um, and so those are the ones I have right now. And they can also kind of appear brownish. Like, my Mako is, like, a really deep forest green, but she's not quite this brown. So, that's what the, um, Bombina Orientalis looks like. And let's see if I can type up, um, Bombina Variegata. And then this is what the frogs I'm getting look like. So, Bombina Variegata, um... I'm pronouncing that right but it looks like variegata um and so yeah all the gorgeous yellow underbellies <laughs> and the brown or like grayish upper side so like they're really cool looking oh, I'm so happy I can't wait to have them but yes the reason you should never ever cohab a firebelly newt and a firebelly toad is because they are two completely different species firebelly toads will eat anything that moves so your newt is more than likely to be nommed on um and also they leak toxins into their water because they're amphibians and you obviously don't want to do that you know when combining species it's so stupid don't do that but that's just my two cents on that matter but yeah i'm super super excited to get them um, they're just so gorgeous. And then the ones that, um, Josh's frogs, like, they look really healthy. They look, you know, really clean looking. I don't see anything that I would be concerned about. And I was talking earlier about their, how often do you bathe Franklin and Nova? Once a week. Um, sometimes twice, but it just depends. Um, so they have literally all you need to know in here. But the really neat thing is, like, when you read about, let's see if I can find it. Here, these frogs are produced uh, via our certified breeder program process, which allows us to bring a wider variety of healthy captive bred animals to you. Um, so the animals will be having um, a 30-day quarantine to make sure that they are the healthy. Let's see if I can find it. 
this is a whole thing that you can read about um, in terms of like what strict quarantines and, and different um, like health periods that they go through in order to make sure that all the reptiles are safe and also they're 100% captive bred, they are not wild caught. So, like I said, Josh's frogs, super, super informative. Like, you can find little care guides on all the different species. I'm so sorry I missed this. What did I miss? You missed um, an unboxing and then I'm revealing the species that I'm getting, which I'll actually show you again right now. It is this um, uh, captive bred uh, Bombina variegata firebelly toad, which are different than the ones I currently have because they have bright yellow bellies and brown... Um, top sides and they come from a different part of the world than where mine are from and the great thing is they are captive bred and Josh's frogs I'm just I'm so happy because I've never really supported like a breeder except maybe a couple of times and so I'm really happy that you know if I do it again like I'm going to do with these guys that it'll be something that's really um ethical so let me just show you guys what else they have in terms of their animals so they have some axolotls listed, just a couple of them. They have a lot of insects. They have cave geckos, both like normal and then high color cave geckos. Here, let's go look at their cave geckos. So, their cave geckos are gorgeous and healthy. I have one that I did not get from Josh's Frogs, but the person that I got it from got it from Josh's Frogs. And it's actually this one right here. So this is a lot of what like Nymeria looks like gorgeous and they're super healthy and they're captive bred and they're raised on um dubia roaches and that's literally like <laughs> all my um uh, cave gecko will eat is dubia roaches gorgeous and you can like go to their youtube too and i'll show you how like they keep all their animals so like you don't have to do any guessing of like whether or not you're supporting someone who's going to have like really you know small enclosure sizes or inappropriate enclosures and things like that I just love it. We need to, like, support people in the community that are doing, like, ethical breeding. So then you have morning geckos here. I don't have any of those, so I can't say much about them. They have tons of crested geckos that you can pick from, and each crested gecko listed is what it looks like, too, which is great. And then you have um, Madagascar ground gecko, which is um, not pictus, but um, stumpy. When are you getting the toes? I want to order them this week. So, shipping will depend on weather, of course. Look, they have one. I'm so tempted. Look how beautiful. Look how pretty. Yeah, I've looked at morning geckos before. I think that they are so cool. I'm obsessed with, like, this gecko, actually. Like, this species. I love how little they are. Ever since, like, now that my gecko bookshelves are full, I want to get into other types of gecko species. You have two of those, Carly? Really? Wait, are you talking about morning geckos, or are you talking about the Madagascar ground gecko? And then they have uh, no, gargoyle, no gargoyles available right now. Yeah, I wish Leaftails were more common, too. I'm not willing to support wild-caught ones. And then they also have day geckos, which I would love to get into, but I need to do a, a lot more research. So there's some day geckos. Nano geckos are underrated. I agree 100%. I like little bitty ones. <laughs> Like, how many gallons are your Leo tanks? Okay, well, they measure 27 and a half inches long, I think. I think they might be 28 by um, 12 inches deep, and then they're, like, 13 or 14 inches tall. So they have, like, they're basically, like, a kind of a mix between a 20-gallon tall and a 20-gallon long. So gorgeous. Love them. Don't have any of those, but I'd love to have one one day. So yeah, then those are just their geckos. They have so many frogs. Obviously, they're called. Do you watch Fairy Tale? It's an anime. My fiance watched it, but I have not watched it. Um, they have tons of frogs. Like, they have poison dart frogs, and then they have. I don't know much about frogs, so I can't really say much about them. But they have a ton of Pac-Man frogs. Let's go look at those. So yeah, look at. They have tons of different, um, like different types of uh, Pac-Man frogs you can choose from. And recently, um, Reptile Smiles on Instagram and YouTube, I don't know if she posted a video about it or not, but I know that she posted on Instagram. She got a Pac-Man frog from them, and it looked super happy and healthy, and it was unboxed on Reptilian Garden's channel, so you guys might have seen that. Let's see if I put the brightness up a little bit more. Does that help? No, it's max brightness. Um, 
And then the Axolotls are a new listing on here. I've been subbed to their newsletter since 2011. That's awesome. What is the difference between a fat tail gecko and Leo's? They look very similar. Basically, fat tails are more chill, like in my experience. Um, they require higher humidity, and they are a little bit less active than leopard geckos. So here's some axolotls. Quantity zero, so they just ran out because they were um, not zero the other day. But let's go to feeders. I love reptilian garden. Me too. She's amazing. So, animals for sale. Um, the live insects and feeders. Horned frogs have been my favorite. I would like to have one of those. They're really cool. Um, so they have all kinds of feeders on here. Like, look. There are so many. Um, personally, I use superworms. I use waxworms. I use hornworms. I use... Um, mealworms but these are giant mealworms I just use regular ones um and then I rarely use crickets I hate them they're spawn of satan um but yeah they have literally anything you could possibly want here and then they're boxed really well um from all the times I've ordered from them they've all come alive and uh, they've all come alive <laughs> they've all arrived alive and they also have a three-day insect life insurance policy so, like, it's dependent on temperatures and stuff, of course, but, like, they include heater packs in the shipping. It's really awesome. And also, let's go check out uh, the Exoterras, because that's, like, another thing I buy a lot on here. Terrariums, cages, and housing. Also, their website is easy to use, which I absolutely love. Can you watch one of my videos about feeding my, beady, my beardies? If you send me the link through Instagram, I will. I'd love to get my feeders from Josh's Frogs, but Rainbow Mealworms is only an hour from me. Yeah, Josh's Frogs is only two hours from me, so that's why I get them from there. Um, so let's go to glass terrariums. And then here you're going to see tons and tons of exoterras. Like, no matter what size you're looking for, it's here. And they have tons of quantities, like 113, 80. Okay, this one, 12, 12, 12, you really... <laughs> there are not many things that can live in that anyway, so it's not really a big deal that there's zero quantity. Um, but they have, like, all the good sizes have a have a high quantity. And there's all of them. America is so cheap. <laughs> um, Joss's Frogs is really cheap, like, um, really affordable, I mean. Because I've gotten Exoterras from pet stores, and I've gotten Exoterras from Amazon, and both times they were more expensive than buying from uh, Josh's Frogs. So my last three Exoterras that I've purchased have been from Josh's Frogs. Have you ever thought about getting a red-eyed tree frog? Yes, I have, and I certainly will someday when I have a little bit more space, and um, I definitely need to do more research. My 1212 was $80. What the heck? If you were to choose one to go extinct, would you choose rats or leos? That's a really terrible question. I want to get one of their nanos for my hissing cockroach. Ooh. Well, they're sold out right now. Oh, wait a minute. 12, 12, 12. That says 31. Hmm. So they are in stock. That is $59.99. And if you use code Jessica, which is my name for anyone who doesn't know, and then 15 after it, you will get... Um, you will get 15% uh, off your entire purchase, no matter what you're buying. Do the Exoterras make it in shipping? Absolutely. I just unboxed one on this channel, and it was perfect condition. And the past two, well, this is my third now, so the past three that I've purchased from Josh's Frogs have all come extremely well packaged. The one that I bought off of Amazon came cracked at the bottom. So, how great. And another really great thing is that they have, um, like... Uh, contact on here so you can like if you have any questions they have like a live chat and you can talk to them you can also send them emails when I got their um, live uh, bioactive enclosure with my my cave gecko with all the stuff came from Josh's frogs so I emailed them and I asked you know exactly what was in it because I wanted to be sure that I could um, like clean it out and use it properly for my tire salamander and they were really helpful about what materials were used in it, and it was really great. So, 100%, like, every aspect of, um, like, interacting with their company has been great, like, in terms of communication, in terms, in terms of, like, purchasing from them. So, I have nothing but respect um, for their ethics when it comes to animals, and for how they only have uh, captive bred, and they have a lot of uh, insurance 
for their live feeders and for their animals. So yeah, I 100% recommend getting getting supplies, getting live insects, getting animals from their site, their company. And they also attend expos, so you may see them at an expo sometime and stop by, say hi. Love your channel. If your gecko dies, what type of sauce goes with it? Cute. I'll just have to come visit to get stuff from them. <laughs> if you do, like, you can just, I'll, you can, I'll buy it for you and you can just come pick it up. <laughs> Does Josh's go to expos? Yeah, I just said that actually. Yeah, they go to expos. Um, it's listed on their website, like, if you buy something that you may not, do you have a code for them? I do. It is Jessica, J-E-S-S-I-C-A-1515. That will give you 15% off your entire purchase, no matter what you're buying. Whether it be feeders, whether it be enclosures, or a live animal, you can use that code. But, um, what was I saying before that? Shoot. Let me see if I saw it in the comments. If you go, um, and you buy something from their site, and then you get to the shipping portion, they will also list any expos that are upcoming so that if it's near you, you can just pick up something from them so you don't have to pay for shipping, which I think is incredibly reliable or incredibly um, reliant. What is the word? Incredibly... I don't know what the word is, but it's it's good. If I say the code at Expo, will they give me 50% off? I don't know. I think it's just their website, but you'd have to ask them. What size tank are your current Fireblade Toads in? They are in a 24 long by 18 deep by 12 tall Exoterra. Jessica 15, exactly. So just J-E-S-S-I-C-A-1-5, and that'll get you 15% off anything that you buy from their company. And I've already used it. Um, I used Reptilian Gardens before mine, so when I got my own, I was like, yes! Because I had already been getting the 15% off because of Reptilian Gardens, but um, I was really happy to get my own, so of course, now I'm sharing it. And then I'm also going to do a live unboxing of when I get my frogs, which will be super fun. I'm so excited. And I'm also going to be mentioning all the great things about Josh's frogs, as well as the... Can we also use code James for 10? No, you cannot. Oh, that's really funny. Um, but yeah, so... I'll also be mentioning that code and other information. Do you support your animals with just YouTube? Oh no, I do not make enough money on YouTube to support my animals. Mm -mm, no, I make, and I don't care about sharing how much I make because, um, like, I don't, I don't think it should be private or personal. Um, but I make uh, two hundred and twenty dollars before taxes. Is there lipstick on my tooth? Cute. I make two hundred and twenty dollars on. Is it still there? Is that lighting? What is that? Oh my god, anyways, $220 on um, YouTube before taxes, so every month, that's not that much money. <laughs> when you have animals like as many as I do, that is not enough money. It is not enough money. So, I have other work that I have to do in order to support that, but I would love if one day that YouTube is um, something that I can sustain myself and my animals with, but that would be far, far, far away. Long time away. So, hopefully you guys are still there when that happens, though. That would be so exciting. I spend, like, 220 every two weeks on my animals. Exactly. Exactly. It's not enough. It's not enough for just, um... So, just, it's not enough to just cover my animals, let alone my own personal expenses. How long are you going to stay on? I'll be on for a few more minutes. Um, it'll be two full hours in 18 minutes. Holy cow! It did not feel like two hours. How fast does that go? Now I get it, like... The people who stream on Twitch, they do it for like eight hours and it's just like gone. I'm like, how do you stream for eight hours? But like now I kind of get it. I don't get how people can stream for eight hours without like eating and drinking though. That'd be exhausting. Exhausting. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to think about what I should name the frogs. I know that I want to do something that's, um, along the lines of what I currently have my other frogs named as, which are Cora Maka, Cora Mako Asami and Bolin. How do you feel about UV lighting for Leos? I don't use it, so if you use it, that's fine. It's probably not going to hurt your Leos. Um, I just don't personally use it. Um, but I'm thinking about similar names um, along the lines of like uh, Avatar The Last Airbender or Avatar Legend of Korra or maybe just a different anime altogether or... Um, yeah, I'm, I'm still thinking. I'm still thinking. Had I been getting four frogs... You can just name them yellow and mellow. <laughs> Had I been getting four frogs, I would have named them something, um, I probably would have named them, like, Aang, Katara, uh, Toph, and 
Sokka. Oh my god, I forgot his name for a second. So I would have had to be getting four, I would have done that. But since I'm only getting two, I don't know. Um, I would love to have four, but I didn't have space for four. And also, they are $50 a frog, so that's a lot of money. Say hi to Lauren as a surprise. LOL, because I'm with her now. Hello, Lauren. I have to go get ready for work. Oh, thank you for being here, Angela. Sword Art Online. My fiance watches that. He watches, like, every anime, though, to be fair. My hand just got really itchy. Lucy, Gray, Natsu. Uh, no, I'm only getting two frogs, so I need two names. And I don't know that anime, so... And we already have one gecko that Aaron, it's Aaron's gecko he named uh, Urza. Most of my animals are named after comic characters and two are Star Wars characters. I love Star Wars. So my animal like name themes are for my geckos like that are like um, terrestrial, they're Game of Thrones and then my uh, crested gecko and any arboreal gecko that I get will have an R name because I want it to go along with Re. So like Re, Rin, Ru, something short. Yeah, what Bree what Bree just said is perfect right there. I'll read it out loud. UV makes a slight difference with Leos, but not a huge one. As long as you are consistent with supplements, you'll not need it. Thank you. Perfect. Um, and then when it comes to my amphibians, my axolotls and my salamander, um, they have Harry Potter names. When it comes to my frogs, whether it be my fire toes or my African dwarf frogs, they have anime names. So I have Naruto, Sasuke, and Sakura, my fire toes, or my okay uh i have naruto sasuke and sakura my african dwarf frogs and then i have my fireblade toads mako uh Korra, asami and bolin and then we also name our skinks after anime characters so we have roku which is a character from avatar last airbender and we have haku which is a character from naruto and also a character from um spirited away have you watched made in abyss i have not and then we have um, our beta dragons don't have any theme to their names. We've just kept the names they were ad were adopted with. So like Franklin already had his name when I got him at like five months old. And then Nova was like six or seven months old when we got her and we just kept her name as Nova. So the theme I guess is just keeping their names. So yeah, that's how we, that's how I like to go about naming them. My friend wants to know if I have any tips on toilet training her guinea pigs. I know you don't have any, but still, well, to to potty train rats, I basically, like, for a little while, took their poops and put them in the litter so that they would understand that that's where the poops are supposed to be. And um, sometimes my rats also pee there as well. I love how you stay consistent with themes. I just come up with spontaneous names. I'm, like, real organized like that. Like, once I had a couple Game of Thrones geckos, it was like, they're all going to be Game of Thrones. So that's what it's been. Um, and then once they had a theme, it was like, well, everyone else has to have a theme. So that's how that happened. Um, but at whew, in the beginning, I was only just keeping names that they already had. So, like, my Crested Gecko, you're okay. You're okay. I didn't touch you. My Crested Gecko, Re, I kept her name Re, so that's why she has that. And the same thing with Franklin. Um, are they frogs? You should name them Lick a Tongue and Licky Licky. Oh my goodness. Lick, Lick a Tongue is a Pokemon, right? I don't know about Licky Licky. Laura wants to know if you have any tips on toll training. Oh, I was still saying that. Okay. So for training the rats, I just basically picked up their poos and put them in their litter boxes. I have three litter boxes in their cage just to make sure that they have one like, you know, wherever they need it. They have one in their, on top level, one on their bottom level, and then they have one on one of their like little half shelves. Um, it just is to make sure that if they have to go, they have somewhere to use it. They're really, really, really good. Probably the best rats I've ever had when it comes to litter training. And they always poop in this bottom one. Like, like 80% of their poops are in this bottom one over here. And then the rest are going to be up in their top one. They pretty much never poop in the one in the middle, but like sometimes they do. And they still, they pee in them too. I don't know why, but like I never trained that, but they also do pee in them. So they don't always pee in them but they do pee in them, which is great. Um, but yeah, I just kept putting the poops in there and then they pooped in there on their own. They were young when I started them, so like they learned it like in like two days and they've been doing that for months now. So every day I just dump out their litter trays, wipe them out and put them back in. It's really nice to help keep clean. Whoa, careful. Wait till you guys see the rat cage theme I have coming next. Oh my God, it is the coolest I've ever come up with. So I've had like a bunch of different themes over my years of having rats, but oh my God, this next theme. That's why I'm skipping the Christmas one because I just wanna put all my money and effort into the, this one because it's gonna be so wicked cool when it's done. It's literally so cool. Like, I'm excited. I don't wanna reveal it, but I'm so excited. <sighs> 
I can't wait. Theme hype. Rat family likes to go in one corner, so if you try to keep the poops where the pee corner, they usually start going there. Yeah, I keep all their litter trays in the corner. So, like, they'll have their litter tray in the bottom is in the back left corner, and then their litter tray in the top is in the front right corner. I would love to have a leaf tail. But I just don't, like, there's, there's like, no availability for me to have one. Because um, I don't really want a wild caught one. And they're also very delicate from what I've heard. And so I'd want to do a lot more research and, like, before I get one. Which is why I've been waiting to get a red crocodile, red eye crocodile skink. Um, I've wanted one for a long time. But the more and more research I do and the more different enclosures I see, everybody keeps them a little bit differently. And so that's why I'm, like, really trying to gather as much information as I possibly can before I get one. Um, especially in terms of like enclosure size, in terms of who uses UVB and who doesn't, I probably will. Um, in terms of like what they eat, people feed them different things. When are you getting the frogs? This week, um, they'll probably, I'm intending to buy them today and then Josh's frogs will probably email me about shipping and I'm good to have them shipped tomorrow night into Wednesday. Um, so if that works out then great and if it doesn't then I'll probably have them shipped, uh, next week. Cause um, because it's cold here now, they do not deliver to your door, um, if temperatures are below 40 degrees. So it'll have to go, I'll have to go to, like, the, uh, shipping center to pick them up. Um, so, that's why it has to be, like, a specific day, because I feel like make sure I have, like, the time to run out that morning and go get them, um, before my fiancé goes to work, too, because he'll be with me and it'll be a lot of fun. We had to do that with our gecko, Eddard. He wasn't shipped to our house. He was just shipped and held at the center, and then we, like, jumped in the car and went and got him because we were like, why isn't he here? UV is optional for BP. Is that ball python? Who's is people talking about by ball, by ball pythons? Wow. Oh, my goodness. I cannot talk. Probably going to stray away from theme names for the new edition because I can't think of any gemstone names remaining that I like. Oh, that's difficult. A Google search might help, though. I'm sorry he was a good frog. Oh, someone's frog passed away. That makes me really sad. I picked my thumbs today. Again, I'm so sad. You, like, pick the skin around them. That's no good. My sister does that. It's real not good for your skin. Also looks nasty. She was a good frog. I have another pair of squish and squash. Oh, those cute names. I haven't lost any of my fireball toes yet, and I'm going to, like, break when I do. I wish to own... I don't know how to pronounce that, but I wouldn't want any unless I'm able to breed them. Interesting. How are you doing, JB? He's just sleeping so hard. That's rude. What, that it looks gross? It does, like, because, like, you... The more you have to look at it, the more, like, you focus on picking it more. You know what I mean? So, like, if you can try not to do it, then the sight of it isn't there either. My sister does it, so, like, I know what her, like, reasons to do it are. She's, like, driven to do it. I use UV for most of my animals regardless. Yeah, I use them for all their diurnal species. We were talking about this the other day, but like 100% use them for a diurnal species. Like people don't keep skinks with um, UVB. I'm like, what do you mean? Like my fire skink, people, some people don't keep UVB with them. And I see him basking before brumation every morning when that light came on at like 7 a.m. Every single morning. So I'm just like, what do you mean you don't? My dog is like dead asleep. This poor little angel, he's so cute. <sighs> What's the matter? Hmm? You wanna come up here and hang out with me for a minute? He may growl. Oh, but he's just too tired to growl. Oh, oh. <laughs> he's like a lump. Oh, honey. It's okay. I love the way he smells. My skink basks then escapes and hides in garbage bags. <laughs> Skinks are some of like the most fascinating lizards temperament wise because some of them are just real funny and some of them are real mean Some of them are real content to be with you and someone be left alone I told my mom that if I pick them I want her to oh, oh it's going away I told my mom that if I pick them I want her to take a pound out of my money I know I said that I don't even care about money I just want this habit to stop Oh your nails? Yeah it's, it's not a good habit You gonna go lay down? He's so sleepy He's smelling my... Here, you want a little pipe? You want a little a piece, a bite? Here. Want that? Yeah, you can have a little honey checks piece. That's okay. He's so tired, he's eating like... He's eating so slow. And, like There he goes. He's finally chewing it. Alright, so I'm gonna go in seven minutes. That'll be a full two hours. Crocodile skinks are cool and all, but they're never out. That's okay with me. My fire skink is never out. I never really get to see him except like once a month, so... 
that doesn't bother me at all like what drives me about having animals is their enclosures I love like having really nice looking enclosures but my enclosures are nothing compared to Brie her enclosures are so cool um except like the gecko enclosures are cool and all but she puts way more work into hers um like in terms of like the expanding foam and like driftwood and stuff that's so cool um and then I never ever see my burrowing frogs yeah there's species that we keep just for the purpose of like we enjoy them even if we don't get to see them so the idea of having a crocodile skink I'm very drawn to even if I only get to see them once in a while is because I want to properly educate and um, like represent them because a lot of people will just get them and take flashy pictures with them and hold them in their hands and stuff and they're very delicate they're not meant to be handled especially if they're wild caught you know you really have to treat them like much more gentle than you would have to treat other reptiles like a leopard gecko for example so I think that I really like to have them for the for proper education um, and for um, like representing you know what they what they're really about is you know not handling them leaving them be letting them be the species that they are which is hiding which is you know enjoying the darkness <laughs> I rarely hold any of my pets yeah I don't hold ones that don't like being held uh, my fire skink I haven't held since he was a baby because he bites <laughs> so I just let him do his thing I'm just here to enjoy them exactly like just knowing that they are a part of my life and that I care for them and that like that's enough rewarding for me that I don't need to like interact with them and take flashy photos and stuff they only last one year though and they're about sixty dollars wait what is my local reptile chain store has these heat and UV bulbs that go bask in the heat and get UV based in time oh I have those and um are they mega ray mercury vapor bulbs because I use those. I only hold my Leo. She doesn't mind being held. Yeah, Leos um, are very personable compared to other reptiles. And you can definitely hold them, like, more frequently than others. Animal caretakers first, photographers second. Very true. Um, unfortunately, that hurts, like, my Instagram numbers. Because, like, I don't take pictures of them in, like, really good lighting. Because, uh, like, some of them don't want bright lights in their face. Or, you know, like, I don't hold my amphibians because they're not meant to be held. So, like, a lot of my pictures may be, like, dark or maybe blurry or the animal may be partially hidden. So, oh well. My bearded dragons, though, are out all the time. They are extremely social and will destroy the tanks. <laughs> will destroy their tanks if I don't take them out. Hi, Lauren. My bearded dragons are very active except right now because of brumation. Ugh. Franklin is brumating. It's very annoying. Let me come over and be your gecko photographer. Yes, you can come over and be my gecko photographer. You take good pictures of your geckos. I just like, I don't know, like, I'm, I'm not, you think I'd be better at taking pictures of my reptiles after having an Instagram since 2015? Maybe actually 2014. 2014? But I'm just not, not, not as good as I should be. Oh well, that's all right. My frog is literally like standing like this with his hand up like this, like please feed me. You fatties, they eat way too much. I've eaten way too much pizza. I ate a lot of pizza yesterday. I had a migraine and I was making pizza while making a migraine and I was like slurring my speech. Man, migraines are no joke, but the pizza was delicious. Hey, I love your channel. I have got so many tips from you. Keep it up. Thank you so much. You said Stan Lee died? You did not just tell me Stan Lee died. I will literally, we're gonna break this stuff out. This probably a hoax. He's not dead. He's not dead. He's a national treasure. He's not dead. I will literally cry on the stream right now. Twitter. I follow him on Twitter. This is not real. This is not real. This is not real. It's a hoax. I'm telling you right now. It's not a hoax. Oh! No! What the shit? Ugh. I can't handle the emotions. No! No. No, Stan Lee, no, what a year, oh my god, no, oh. look at Jackson knows I'm upset, he's trying to comfort me, damn it, 
it all to hell. What the shit? This was gonna be, this was a perfect, or this was a great live stream up until now. Ah, no. Come here, Jackson, I need a hug. Come here. I need a hug. Come here. Oh, I know. You're so heavy. Ugh. No. No. <sighs> Jackson, I'm having so many emotions. Stan Lee died, Samantha. Stan Lee. A national treasure. Oh, Jackson, don't knock it over. It wasn't a hoax. It's real. I checked. The first tweet I saw was Ryan Reynolds tweeting it, which means it's not a hoax. <sighs> I'm not okay with this. Jackson, I'm not okay. Ugh. This is... I was very pained when I found out that Robin Williams died. I was very pained when I found out that Michael Jackson died. Although I felt more pain as I got older because I was young at the time. I was very pained. The most pain I ever had was when I found out that Steve Irwin died. Mm -mm. Oh, my dog Zach heard me upset and now he's crying at the door. You wanna go see your brother? Yeah, I'm gonna take you with me. I'm so upset. God, what a terrible way to end this live stream. Aaron! Stan Lee died. <sighs> what the shit, man. Come on in. All of you. Let's go. <sighs> Are you coming in or not? Make up your mind. Well, we've reached the two-hour mark. So, we're going to be ending that one on a sad note because... Stan Lee is dead, and that's horrible. And I'm gonna go wash off this makeup with my own tears. Thank you all for being here. Go hug someone you love today, and feel bad about Stan Lee. And stay off Twitter, because that place is gonna be full of sad nerds like me. Oh, I'm just real upset about that. Bye, everyone.